Lord, this is your time. This is your word. We are your people. Speak to us. Have your way. And convict our hearts to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 People get ready. There's a train a coming. You don't need no baggage. You just get on board. All you need is faith to hear the diesels humming. Don't need no ticket. You just thank the Lord. People get ready. There's a train a coming. You don't need no baggage. You just get on board. All you need is faith to hear diesels humming. Don't need no ticket, you just thank the Lord. Yeah. All right. These sentiments, amen, 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 amen. In 1965, Curtis Mayfield and the Impressions called the righteous to get on board, to prepare for the move of God. This song calls on us to not bring any baggage with us. Tell somebody don't bring any baggage. Uh, it says you don't need anything except faith, amen. And then it goes further to say that no faithless, hopeless sinners will be able to get on. Tell somebody you've gotta have faith. But before 1965, before Curtis Mayfield, before the impressions, Joshua, the third chapter, starting at the first verse says, early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp giving orders to people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and Levitical priest carrying it, you are to move from your position. Tell somebody, get out of your position, get out of your position. and follow it. Then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. Tell somebody, you ain't been here before. But keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the Ark. Do not go near it. Verse 5, the scripture for this morning, Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves. Tell somebody, consecrate yourself. For tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourself. For tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things before you. People get ready. Joshua here in the third chapter is encouraging Israel uh, who is preparing to go into the place and the land that God had promised them. They had already spent uh, 40 years in the wilderness. Uh, Moses is now passed away, uh, uh, their old leader, and now Joshua has been anointed to lead them into the promised land. Many generations have passed on by now, and they've even in the wilderness been able to see God move in miraculous ways. Is there anybody that even in your hard times you were able to see God move in a miraculous way? And so they were familiar with who God was was and what God was able to do. They had seen God keep them even in the hardest of times, but what they had seen had nothing on what God was about to do. They had seen and experienced God's love and God's faithfulness, but they had not seen his love and faithfulness in the way that he was about to show it. I'm talking to somebody this morning. Yeah, God might have been good up to now, but he's never been as good in your life as he's about to be. Yes, God may have blessed you before but he ain't never blessed you the way he's about to bless you. Yes, God has brought along change in your life, but he ain't never changed things the way that you're about to see him change. And so I came this morning to say, people, get ready. Tell somebody, get ready. 
Joshua does not use the phrase get ready. So I, I, I took a little liberty, but what he tells the people to do is consecrate themselves. Tell your neighbor, consecrate yourself. Uh, you might not know what that means. Now you're just telling folks stuff. Uh, but the word consecrate means uh, to make or declare as sacred. In another place, it says that con con consecrate means to dedicate for a divine purpose. In another place, it says to consecrate means to ordain to a particular office. And in one more place, it says to direct all actions to a specific act. Make or declare a sacred, dedicate for a divine purpose, ordain to a particular office, direct all of your actions towards a specific act. Consecrate yourself. Tell somebody, consecrate yourself. This was necessary. Usually when we look at the scripture, we think that this is just about that God is about to take them into the promised land, that he's about to cross them over the river Jordan. But when we look at the scripture, it is not just about what God is about to do, but the way that he's about to do it. I know again that in your life, God has already been blessing you, but now God desires to do a new thing in a new way in new places. I came this morning to tell us and remind us that we've got to get ready because what God is about to do in our lives, we've never seen it before. We've never seen how he's about to do it. We've never seen where he's about to do it. There are places in your life that you don't even realize God has just been keeping you afloat. Well, get ready for those places for God to explode them and grow them and mature them and drive them into new spaces and places that you've never seen. God did not need the people of Israel to consecrate themselves simply because he was about to bless them they had been blessed all the time tell somebody I'm blessed see when you're blessed all the time when you wake up blessed and you go to sleep blessed you might be looking for God to do something brand new no I'm not worried about my bills I'm not worried about if I'm going to be able to make it to the next day I'm not worried about my health actually pastor my life is going pretty well I'm comfortable things are all right I'm cool everything is fine well I came to let you know that even if you're just okay God still wants to do something new and different in your life and in order for him to do it you've got to get ready you've got to consecrate yourself you've got to take some sacred space and some sacred time you've got to direct your actions all for one purpose you've got to make sure that you are ready to hold a particular space and office I came this morning to remind us that it's time to get ready I came this morning to let us know that it's time that we consecrate ourselves people get ready can I point out something interesting to you about this scripture? Um, uh, 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 um. It's weird because he says he's going to do something that he's never seen before, and then they cross the Jordan, and they cross the Jordan on dry land, right? Which they had seen that before, right? He had done that before. Sometimes uh, uh, you might be looking at something that wasn't about you. Uh, while God had uh, parted the seas before he had not done it for this generation and so what the scripture is teaching us about is God's ability to do what he did for your parents for you that's going to be important for somebody some of y'all might be struggling but when you look back at your grandmother and your great grandmother and your father and your mother you see that they were blessed this morning I want you to let you I want to let you know that the same thing that he did for your grandparents he can do for you that the same way that he kept your mama and your daddy he can keep you no it wasn't amazing as a matter of fact, the Jordan was a little bit small, was a lot smaller than the Red Sea. But what God was saying is the same way that I blessed them, I can bless you. The same way that I helped them, I'm going to help you. The same way that I was with them, I'm with you. And so you don't have to worry. All I need you to do is get ready. Sometimes God has to remind us that he's been there for us generation after generation, day after day, year after year. I brought you through COVID, so I'm going to bring you through 2021. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. Your parents struggled. Your parents were broke, but look what I did for them. And guess what? Everything that I did for them, I can do for you. But I need you to get ready. But you might be saying, how? How do I get ready? Uh, 
There are four things I want to offer this morning that the scripture shows us. The first is to consecrate yourself. Tell somebody, consecrate yourself. Real simple. It's the title. It's a part of the title of the sermon. But consecration means uh, that there are some things in our life that we have to cut off and cut away in order for God to do what it is that he's about to do. There are some relationships that we need to cut off and cut away. There are some habits that we need to cut off and cut away. Uh, another thing about uh, this particular group of people who God was about to take into Jericho uh, was that many of them had not been circumcised. You understand that circumcision was a very important thing among the, Israel, uh, the children of Israel. And so they had not been circumcised. And before they were able to cross, amen, Dr. Hines, they had to make sure that all of those who were not circumcised had been circumcised because they needed to say to God we are ready to be obedient to what you're calling what you're calling us to do the thing that God is about to do in your life you've got to be ready to cut some stuff off and the truth of the matter is it wasn't doing you no good anyway matter of fact when you start listing the things that God is calling you to cut off you know it's already giving you some headaches some heartache some stress some pain some tears and so I want to call on us this morning to consecrate yourself cut some stuff off tell somebody cut it off the second thing that we must do is follow the leaders tell somebody follow the leader uh, in the scripture for this morning uh, the soldiers tell the people follow God and the Levites because you don't know where you're going the awesome thing about God taking us to places that we've never been before is that it requires that we be faithful. Uh, you can't go where you've never been before because you don't know how to get there. And since I don't know how to get there, I might as well follow God because if I don't know how to get there, I might end up in the wrong place. Is there anybody who's ended up in the wrong place before? Uh, you knew God was going to bless you, but you started trying to do it by yourself. Maybe it's just me when I knew God was trying to do a new thing in my life. And rather just rather than listen to him and take his direction, I was like, oh, Lord, I think I know the way. And I started walking and I ended up lost. Anybody? Amen. I'll say amen for myself. Uh, but what he says is follow God and the priest. In other words, follow the leaders. Follow the people that I've put in front of you, not because they're better than you, but because I've shown them where it is that you're going to go. That when you follow God and when you follow the priest, they will help you to miss some of the challenges that you're going to encounter trying to do this by yourself. That when you follow God and when you follow your leaders, I, I can be accountable if anything goes wrong because when you go off by yourself, you're going to have to deal with that on your own. But if you do do what I'm telling you to do and go where I'm telling you to go. I'll make sure that you do not stumble. I'll make sure that you do not fall. I just need you to follow the leader. Consecrate yourself. Follow the leaders. Three, watch for the sign. Tell somebody, watch for the signs. Um, I know it's a setup. Y'all like, this is the same sermon you preached first, the first time you preached. You're right. Uh, it's a setup. Watch for the signs. Um, God has a conversation with Joshua in the scriptures, and he tells Joshua, he says, what I'm about to do is going to let the people know that just like I was with Moses, I am now with you. Uh, the reason we have to watch for the signs because the signs are a sense of encouragement. The signs are things that God is showing us to let us know that he has not forgotten about us. The signs are the things that God is doing to let us know that he is indeed with us. Remember, you've never been here before. And so there might be some things that are scary. There might be some things that seem tough. There might be some things that are hard. But if you look for the signs, God is just saying to us, I'm right here with you. If you look for the signs, God is reminding you, I never left you nor forsake you. If we look for the signs, we'll see that God is not far. And the same favor that he showed us before, he's showing us today. Consecrate yourself. Follow the leaders. Watch for the signs. And the fourth thing, move forward. Tell somebody, move forward. <sighs> this is a hard one. Because oftentimes we expect God to bless us right where we are. 
Uh, we want to stay in the same mindsets. We want to stay in the same habits. We want to stay in the same fears. We want to stay in the same doubts. We like to stay in our comfortable place. Is anybody guilty of that? That uh, you want God to do something, but you want to stay right where you're comfortable. Because God, if if I have to get uncomfortable, then 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 I I don't I don't necessarily know if I want you to move where God is about to take you in your life, where God is about to take your family, where God is about to take your community, where God is about to take your church. It is going to require you to get moving forward. It is going to require us to no longer be okay with business as usual. It is going to require us to be willing to do some things that we've never done before. The only way we can go to places we've never been is to do things we've never done. The only way we can do things we've never done is to think in ways we've never thought. The only way we can think in ways we've never thought is to believe on God the way we've never believed on God. And so this morning, I'm calling on each and every one of us to move forward. We want to see God do something with our children move forward we want to see check this out there are some places in our life where we so stuck on nonsense and foolishness that we cannot see what God is doing there are things that we still angry about stuff we won't let go of stuff we're still heartbroken and we're just sitting there and God is saying I'm trying to move you I'm trying to grow you I'm trying to bless you I'm trying to lift you and what I need you to do is move forward move forward from that disappointment move forward from that pain move forward from that hatred move forward from that anger move forward from your mistakes move forward from that person that took advantage of you I need you to move forward imagine imagine what we would be talking about today if Israel decided they did not want to cross the Jordan Imagine if they had decided they were just going to stay in Egypt. And don't get me wrong, they tried, amen. Uh, we wouldn't even be standing here having this conversation. Which means that it is upon us to move forward so that our descendants, our children's 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 children can go forward. We have to move forward not just for ourselves, but for those that come after us. We have to move forward not just for ourselves, but for those who God is calling to bless. So I came this morning to remind us to get ready. The way we get ready is to consecrate ourselves. Follow the leaders. Watch for the signs and move forward. We've got to get ready because God is about to do things we've never seen in ways that we've never seen, in places that we've never seen. We've got to get ready because God is going to do things in our families that we've never seen. He's going to fight battles that we did not think we could win in wait. Can we talk about that in the text? Uh, a part of the setup is God has prepared to take all of their enemies out. Check this out. They don't even have to fight. Uh, in the battle of Jericho, it just says walk around singing and worshiping. Uh, it, uh, the battle, they really didn't even do much. They didn't have to kick no walls down. They didn't have to pull out a sword. It just says walk around worshiping. I want to encourage somebody this morning, whatever you're going through, if God is moving and you know it, just start walking around worshiping. Walk around your house and start worshiping. If your children are tripping, go to their school and just walk around and start worshiping. If you need something in your church, just start walking around worshiping. If you need something in your job, just start walking around and worshiping because the worship is where the victory is. The worship is where the, 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 the blessing is. The worship is where the power is. The worship is where the change is. Uh, uh, we've got to get ready because God is going to fight our battles in ways we've never seen before. We've got to get ready because God God is going to heal our bodies in ways we've never seen before. We've got to get ready because God is going to change our lives in ways we've never seen before. We've got to get ready. We've got to get ready. Parks Chapel, get ready. Sons of Allen, get ready. WMS, get ready. Preachers, get ready. Musicians, get ready. Choir, get ready. Mothers, get ready. Fathers, get ready. Sons, get ready. Daughters, get ready. Trust 
trustees get ready. Stewards get ready. Teachers get ready. Get ready. Get ready in your homes. Get ready with your children. Get ready with your spouses. Get ready with your parents. Get ready with your friends. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because God is about to do something that he's never done before. can't stay on the other side of the river. But you can't go over the same way that you are right now. What God has for you is so phenomenal that you don't want to sell yourself short taking the same baggage that you got on this side of the river over to the other side. What God has prepared for you is so amazing that he has to do, he has to guide you there in amazing ways so that when you get there, you can believe it. God is not a magician, he's a scientist. And so there's somebody in here, there's a bunch of folks in here actually, that God has been doing odd and peculiar things in your life to your benefit. And you've been trying to figure out how are things happening this way? Why are things turning out this way? Uh, this is just the beginning. And these odd and peculiar things that are happening in your life is God's way of telling you to get ready. Don't get caught up in the fact that good things are happening while you're still keeping your old ways. I'll say it again, because we can miss it sometimes. We can stay in our foolishness and say, well, God is still blessing me, so I must be okay. No. Uh, God gets our attention two ways. Uh, he leaves us to our own devices that usually ends in turmoil because I don't believe God, oh, I'm punishing you. No, God just let us do us sometimes and when we do us, foolishness happens. Uh, or because we serve a merciful and loving God, he blesses us even when we don't deserve it. Because when you start getting blessings you don't deserve, you start thinking, God, what's going on? You thinking about me? And he said, yeah, I'm thinking about you. So I need you to get your mind right because I'm trying to do something with you. And what I need to do with you, you gotta shut some of this foolishness down. And so this is the opportunity this morning to get ready. And getting ready starts with ensuring that we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, there are three calls this morning. The first is the most important a call to salvation. And so if there's someone in here or someone worshiping with us online that does not know Jesus Christ and you would like to make him savior of your life, I'm going to ask you to say the prayer of salvation with me. Uh, the second call is a call to join the family of faith uh, here at Parks Chapel. Um, let's be clear that the story of Israel is a family story. 
These ain't just a bunch of random folks that God was blessing independently. This was a family of people, and this is the story about how God moved in their life, which suggests that we got to be a part of a family so that we can see the generational blessings of God. Amen. Uh, and the third is you might know Jesus. You might have a place where you are a part of the family, uh, but you have been struggling with feeling disconnected and you'd like to rededicate your life to God. Uh, if that is any person in here, uh, the last two to join membership or to rededicate your life, uh, just say out loud or put in line, it's me, Lord. Amen. Uh, but this morning, if you're worshiping with us, whether here or online, and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want to invite you uh, to lift up both of your hands and repeat this prayer with me. Lord God, I confess that I am a sinner. And I desire to lead a new life in Jesus Christ. I repent from my old way of living and submit to a new life in you, Lord. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins on the cross. And that three days later, you raised him from the dead with all power in your hand. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior over my life. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, so that I may be saved. If you believe that prayer with your whole heart, say amen. 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 And you are indeed saved by the blood of Jesus. Uh, if by chance you answered yes to the other two questions, uh, after worship, I'd invite you to uh, pull one of the ushers to the side and let them know that you'd like to join us here at Parks Chapel. If you have a desire to rededicate your life, uh, please do the same. And uh, we will walk and work with you uh, as we get ready for what God is doing. Amen. 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 And now let us uh, prepare ourselves for the receiving of Holy Communion. Uh, before we do that, uh, we are, I was supposed to make this announcement earlier, so forgive me. Uh, we are looking for uh, a bunch of new teachers, but uh, primarily for a new youth Sunday school teacher. Amen. Uh, because Sister Nicole is going to be, we, we excited because she's getting married, amen. And uh, her and Reverend Sherrod, and so uh, she is going to be uh, fulfilling her ministry uh, in another place, but we got to make sure that we do not let these babies be without uh, the word, amen. And so um, if you would see, uh, who should I assign this to? I like to give people work. Uh, if you would see uh, Brother Lonnie after worship, uh, or Brother Watkins, or uh, Sister Paula, if you're interested in uh, any of the teaching for Sunday schools and Bible studies, but primarily for the youth class, uh, please see any one of those persons. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves for communion. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, earnestly repent of your sins and in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commands of God and walking henceforth in his holy ways draw near with faith and take his holy sacrament to your comfort making your humble confession before almighty God meekly kneeling the general confession almighty God father our Lord Jesus Christ 
maker of all things, judge of all people. We acknowledge and be well our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all of them with hearty repentance and true faith, turn to you, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all of our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is very meek right in our bounding duty that we shall at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your holy name evermore, praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord, most high. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is to always have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear son Jesus and to drink his blood that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen, 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 amen. amen. And on the same night that he was betrayed, he took the bread. When he, when he blessed it, he broke it saying, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remissions of sin. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Let us drink the wine together. Let us drink wine together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy on me. Let us praise God. Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together. everyone receive their communion.
body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ broken for you the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ broken for you take and eat all of it the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you. Take and drink all of it. Having renewed your covenant, live in love and charity with your neighbor. Amen. Let us now say the prayer that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Everybody say, everybody say, everybody say, amen, 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 everybody say. Things flow. is preparing to do something that you've never seen before. So consecrate yourself and get ready. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, and the love of a mighty good God rest, rule, and abide in your life now and forever. And those who believe said, Amen.
watching us on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. If you're watching us on Facebook, please follow us.